Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the Austin Travis County EMS Award Ceremony. Glad, uh, glad y'all are, are here. You know, glad to see a lot of folks out here. In the past, and, and we'd like to keep it going out here, it's been our tradition to read the paramedics' prayer at the beginning of the ceremony. So please bow your, bow your heads as I read the, read the prayer. Dear Lord, the job I have chosen often shows me the worst of what life has to offer. It is, in these it is during these times, I pray, Lord, that I am able to give my best, not just in terms of my knowledge and skills, but in my, comp my caring and compassion. Help my family to understand, Lord, when my heart is filled with sadness and to celebrate with me when I feel joy in what I was able to do this day. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to make a difference and to understand that I am only one person in this world, but sometimes I am the world to one person. Amen. Thank you. All right, let's keep on going out here. Allow me to pre present uh, Austin Travis County EMS Assistant Chief Jasper Brown. On behalf of the Chief, again, I'd like to welcome you to the Austin Travis County EMS Awards Ceremony. As you all know, this is where we get to celebrate uh, the awards and accomplishments of the previous year and recognize those outstanding employees for their, um, uh, for their accomplishments and, uh, and for the, celebrate us with your fellow workers. I'd like to take just a few minutes to recognize some of the distinguished guests who have come to help us honor our employees. And I'd like to uh, announce uh, Ray Ariano, our assistant city manager, is here tonight. So, Ray Ariano. <laughs> so, to begin with, we'd like to start with our years of service recognition. Uh, as I call your name, if you just stand um, for the five year awards, uh, we have certificates are presented throughout the year, and we ask those to please just stand when your name is called. Amanda Baker, Mallory Boyce. Rick Branning, James Bono, Brandon McCluskey, Adolf Hernandez, Bradley Lines, Eric Pack, Sean Persley, Catherine Rockwell, and Vernon Telchik. Please give these rounds of applause. For 10 years of service, Dean Aronofsky, Megan Adams, Christy Canales, Phil Dedich, John Donahoe, Will Haygood, Kevin Harner, Michael Kane, Michael Kiddock, Natalie Lyon, Laura Maciel, Ken McGarry, Richard Morris, Matthew Pearson, Yvette Rowe, Ken Saunders, and Casey Trupiano and Steve White. For our 15 years of service, Melanie Acosta, David Beckerley, Michael Broadwater, Jeff Brockman, Dave Kerbin, Mike Fontana, Brian Haddis, Rodney Haynes, Jody Hassinger, Andrew Hewitt, Adam Johnson, Dan Crasher, Robin Crasher, Barbara Kruger, Noe Liba, Lupe Mireles, Mark Peek, Catherine Phillips, Chip Shadden, Gil Torres, Marco Villasenor, and Angela Zeleda. So for our 20 years of service, for those individuals that are here tonight, I'd like you to come forward. We have something for you. Uh, so when I have, call your name, please come forward. Ken Bostick, George Gibbons, Jim Martin, Darren Nowak. There's Mr. Nowak. Carol Pierce, Sheila Schwal. Bless you. 
<laughs> Eric Tiemann. That sneeze, I missed Jeff Steele. <laughs> and Randy Vickery. 20 years of service to those individuals. So, 25 years of service. Again, if your name is called, please come forward. We have something for you. Kurt Brown and Elizabeth Campbell. 25 years of service for those individuals. Thirty years of service. Mike Elliott. <laughs> and it, it really is a clock. Believe me, it's not, it's not ticking. And Carolyn Huckle? Carolyn here tonight? No? Okay. So 30 years of service for those individuals. We have one individual with 35 years of service to the city, Mr. Bill Call. Mr. Bill Call here tonight? It's been our tradition to, uh, to acknowledge all employees with uh, more than 20 years of experience. So please stand as I call your name and just remain standing. So we got Mr. Bill Call, Mike Elliott, Carolyn Huckle, James Shamard with 29 years. <laughs> Mill Millie Sabata with 29 years. <laughs> Mark Tomasic. Anthony Flood, 27 years. <laughs> Stay standing, Mr. Flood. Stay standing, Mr. Flood. Janelle Boone. Mike Shipley. Temple Thomas with 26 years of service. <laughs> Kurt Brown. Elizabeth Campbell. Walt Branning. Greg Weller, Paul Alvarez, Pete DiDonato, and Karen Hill. Larry Arms, Mike Benavides, Greg Hall, James Hawley, Brian Fitzpatrick, with 21 years of service. Kathy Jurak, Gary Wadham, and Dennis Williams. Those are all our employees with over 20 years of service. We'd also want to acknowledge our employees who retired during 2014 and 2015, so please stand as your name is called. In 2014, it was Beverly Botorf Patton, Vicki Branning, Terry Cardona, Warren Hassinger, John McIntosh, and Joe Torres. So those are individuals for retirement. In 2015, we've had Ms. Gail Cook. I know she's here tonight. Please come forward. I have something for you, Ms. Cook. So this is a, a Distinguished Service Award uh, given to Ms. Gail Cook uh, for her untiring service and commitment to our citizens during her nearly 18 years tenure as an EMS paramedic, Medic 2. Uh, 
She is deserving of public acclaim and recognition. This certificate is presented in acknowledgement and appreciation thereof this 15th day of October in the year 2000, uh, 2015. Uh, the City Council of Austin, Texas signed Steve Adler, Mayor. And Tracy Don Bosco. She here? Yeah. Yeah. Once again, is Distinguished Service Award for her entire service and commitment to our citizens during her 25-year tenure as an EMS paramedic, Medic 2. Tracy Del Bosco is deserving of public acclaim and recognition. This certificate is presented in acknowledgement and appreciation thereof this 15th day of October in the year 2015. The City Council of Austin, Texas signed Steve Adler, Mayor. I have a watch for uh, Trace, uh, Gail, of you, Gail, one of our runners will run a watch down to you for your <laughs> retirement because I forgot and I got the evil eye on my right here. So, <laughs> it's the correct one. Is GC? GC? Swap it out. Okay. We'd like to take a moment to acknowledge our past and current military personnel who serve not only the city but our nation. So please stand as your name is called if you're here, please, tonight. Robert Acox, Bill Alderetti, Zachary Balding, Nick Baker, Michael Benavides, Carl Britton, Jeff Brockman, Christopher Brown, George Bunting, Andre Capra, Jonathan Coleman, Jeremy Davis, Jeffrey Elias, Daniel Ender, Craig Fairbrother, Anthony Flood, Damon Fogley, Michael Fontana, Gerard Frame, Robert Gregor, David Gregg, Brian Haddis, Nathan Hare, Ryan Haston, David Heights, Raul Hernandez, Christopher Jeans, Eric Johnson, Michael Kane, Jonathan Koninsky, Albert King, Casey Krampitz, James Lawrence, Scott Lindsley, Chris Marks, Scott McCall, Richard Morris, Chris Nelson, Forrest Nelson, Matt Paul, Mark Peak, George Pulios, Ryan Rush, Ken Renard, Larry Rice, Pete Rifle, Rick Rutledge, Mike Sasser, Walt Sedemeyer, Jeff Steele, Brian Stubbs, Brandon Taylor, Andre Thompson, Tim Vasquez, Mike Von Wupperfield, Gabriel Weber, Eric Whiteman, Glenn Waskey, and Millie Zapata. Thank you for your service to our country. At this time, we'd like to recognize a very special group of young men and women. So, Brian, Rob, if you're in the room for the Explorer Post, please come forward. Howdy, I'm Bob Yarger. Um, I run uh, our Explorer program that uh, we've had for about, uh, we're running about five years now. Um, I have the honor to work with this great group of kids uh, right now. Most of them are sitting in the back. Um, but it's a great group of kids and I'm really happy to work with them. Uh, established in 2010, um, I, I can't say anything more other than it's a great group of kids. I'm so honored to be able to work with them. Um, 
I couldn't do it without uh, Fiona and Amanda. Um, Temple has helped a lot as well, um, and Brian Green as well. Uh, all the other advisors that are out there, uh, we appreciate uh, everything that you've done for us. Uh, James Schmar, everybody else that's up here, I mean, Jasper, Chief Brown, Chief Elliott, uh, you guys have been very helpful uh, with everything. Um, so we have uh, an award that we give out every year. It's our Explorer of the Year Award. Um, actually, apparently I missed. No, it's okay. It's okay. Um, I'll read off the names of our explorers. Uh, we have 37, uh, which is the largest we've ever had. Uh, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. And we have not done any uh, active recruiting. This is all word of mouth. Um, so uh, J Joe Arisby, Val Arocha, Jay Beard, Jay's right here. Uh, Evan Bradley, Elizabeth Britt, Jonathan Bunt, Ben Colley, Tony Collins, Zoe Cook, Zoe's back in the back. Stand up, Zoe. <laughs> Savannah Crane, Lily Dickinson, Jacob Dickus, Kelsey Flanagan, Justin Gibson, Tyler Green, Christina Hafner, uh, Joshua Hernandez, Nicole Isaac, Sam Johnson, Obi Jones, Craig Lovell, Jordan Malone, Crystal Martinez, Byron McMillan, who's on the list twice, uh, Avery Mitchell, Caleb Nihas, Michelle Onuha, Ashton Peak, Joseph Ramirez, Tiffany Rule, Alex Sanchez, Maynard Smith, Jordan Taliha, Aaron Cortez, Natalie Walker. Um, so uh, next I'll just give our Explorer of the Year Award. Um, <laughs> our Explorer of the Year Award goes to uh, a gen young gentleman who has shown uh, awesome leadership. Um, he's a kid who's, who's uh, I'm sorry, he's not a kid anymore. Um, he's a young, young man who's, uh, who's always been able to do things for us and uh, when there wasn't somebody, he was the one that stepped up to, to volunteer to do it. So Tyler Green, if you'd come up here, please. So he, he just mentioned a few of the people behind the scenes that have helped out tremendously to help the Explorer Post um, with those 37 young individuals. But we'd also like to recognize those Austin Travis County employees with 100 hours of volunteer service over a minimum of 10 events and at least one year of involvement in the Explorer Post. Um, employees will receive a uh, service ribbon recognizing their contribution. So please stand if we call your name. Brian Green, Rob Yarger, Scott Anderson, Amanda Baker, Fiona Campbell, Michael Flanagan, Mark Peak, and Doug Schultz. And thank you so much for your time. So we move on to our department citations, and they're used by Austin Travis County EMS to recognize specific events or milestones related to the conduct of EMS operations. <clears throat> we begin with our MCI disaster mitigation citation, given in recognition of employees' direct contribution in responding to and resolving a mass casualty situation or disaster. So the nomination we received was, on March 13, 2014, the City of Austin experienced an almost unprecedented incident during the annual South by Southwest Music Festival. The efforts and almost instantaneous response of all these individuals contributed to a positive, uh, to a positive outcome as possible and made all the difference in the world. Everyone involved in the incident at night deserves a round of applause. So please come to the stage as your name is called. Dean Aronowski, Will Adams, Michael Benavides. Paige Bender. <laughs> Angela Cornwall. Dave Kerbin. J.C. Ferguson. 
Jeffrey Gaitan, James Hawley, Katie Hinks, Juan Hinojosa, Tom Holman, Wes Hopkins, and the Wesses. <laughs> Adam Johnson, Michael Kittock, <laughs> Eric Lancaster, Morgan McIntyre, Rebecca Morton, Forrest Nelson, Kevin Nichols, Matt Paul. John Paul. <laughs> Scott Plowacki, Sean Persley, Larry Rice, Chris Lynn Ritchie, Rick Rutledge. Spencer Snow, Tara Spencer, Randy Treffer, Wendy Walker, and Millie Zapata. Next are unit citations. These are granted for units of achievement in such areas as innovation, efficiency, effectiveness, projects, and or unit contributions to the department or other appropriate organizations or groups. This may be awarded to any team, station, command district, or organizational unit, or an entire shift. The nomination we received was, this evening we recognize the AMBUS crew chiefs and drivers. The citation is presented in appreciation for your efforts in making our multiple patient disaster transports unit a reality. Because of your input, labor, and training, a rare and necessary regional response vehicle will be ready should it be needed at any time in any place. And we want to thank you. And so Chief Elliott, since he's been directly involved with that, he will read the names. <laughs> Mr. Elliott's first ride up. <laughs> Mark M Montgomery. Mark's here tonight, I know. All right, Dean Arnikowski, Scott Anderson. Cheryl Bakhtiari, James Denizio, Bo Durham, John Eaton, Janica Elkins, Eric Gordon, Blake Hardy, David Heinz, Juan Hinojosa, Wes Hopkins, Aaron Kutra, Chris Lester, Aaron Maxwell, Ken McGarry, Tammy Mosaic, Ray Miggle, Keith Noble, Brian Parch, George Pulios, 
Edwin Reyes, Darren Rogers, Donald Rose, Dave Thomas, Josh Todd, <laughs> Randy Vickery, and Jeff Watkins. These uh, these folks, as the uh, kind of as a creator of this you know this program out here. Some of these drivers, if you haven't had a chance to talk to them, talk to them about what the course was like to drive a, a school bus that the DPS and the folks at San Antonio Fire Department set up. I went through it one time out there, or actually like seven times, to make sure I could make the little turn out here without running over the uh, persons at the uh, standing on the curb's toes and not hitting the police car on the, on the other side of the street. But without these guys and gals as part of this program out here, this thing would, uh, would not have worked out here. So I appreciate from me personally, appreciate the effort that y'all have, have and uh, continue to put into that program. So thank you very much, gentlemen. Our stork citation is, a, is given in recognition of a provider assisting in childbirth in the pre-hospital setting. This means in a residence, car, or even a business, or even over the phone. So please come forward as your name is called. Jacinto Andrea. Cheryl Bakhtiari. Dana Butler. Angela Carr. Holly Craghill Gill. Jeremy Davis. Daniel Ender. <laughs> Jeremy, yeah. we have a certificate for you. <laughs> Daniel Ender, Freddie Garcia, Louisa Howell. Eric Johnson, Barbara Kruger, Janelle Landers. Natalie Lyon, Jessica McLean, Catherine Phillips, Sean Pursley, Kevin Red, Keegan Sines, Tara Spencer, Michelle Stewart, and Kyle Tone. Life-saving citation is given in recognition of exceptional efforts taken by department employees that directly result in saving a life and or keeping the patient from having a detrimental outcome. These go beyond what is considered normal in an extraordinarily abnormal world, but for the actions of the Travis County EMS personnel nominated, the patient would not have survived their illness or injury. So the nomination reads, Resuscitation calls are difficult in and of themselves. On December 17, 2014, this call was complicated by an uninspected leak of deadly gas which began to affect the medical team. Your recognition and quick response certainly prevented additional casualties. 
Your actions truly define public safety, and for this we are grateful. Please come forward. Brad Lyons. And Josh Todd. Medical Phoenix Citation is awarded for exemplary application and performance of out-of-hospital out medical care, which resulted in the successful resuscitation and subsequent discharge from a hospital of a patient who had suffered a cardiopulmonary arrest from the medical cause. Due to some changes within the OMD, the data for 2014 Phoenix are not available yet. We are evaluating possibilities to make the process of recognizing Phoenix less cumbersome. Once we enable these, we will return to the awarding of those uh, uh, pins and recognitions. This is normally a part of the program where you would see five, six slides, hundreds of people involved in this in, in these uh, life-saving um, efforts, both communications and fields. So uh, for that, as soon as we get the data, we will be um, returning to awarding those in a different fashion. So. <clears throat> So the department awards are used by Austin Travis County to recognize those significant events that warrant recognition and honor by the Department of the Public or the public. They also are used to recognize exemplary performance by individuals and units related to other either specific events or long-term patterns of performance. So for the first award, Assistant Chief Teresa Gardner will. Good evening. Our first award is the Randy Trinkle Perseverance Award. This award is given to individuals who are dedicated, committed employees who unselfishly and graciously meet the needs of others with honor, dignity, compassion, and professionalism while maintaining high standards. We receive the following nomination for this award. It is my distinct honor to nominate Mr. James Lawrence, Austin Travis County EMS Warehouse Supervisor for the Austin Travis County EMS Distinguished Service Award. Since December 2014, I have observed his daily steadfast commitment to running an effective and efficient supply system. Mr. Lawrence clearly demonstrates a high commitment to excellent customer service and support to field operations. His efforts during several complex supply transitions, including updated airway systems transition, the IGEL implementation, and a new medical supply management system for station supply, were a critical part of a seamless transition to both of these programs. Largely due to his efforts, these systems were implemented with a noticeable efficiency and subsequent elimination of duplication of effort, resulting in a significant cost savings to the department. Mr. Lawrence's ability to react to short notice events, be it emerging inclement weather, a crew needing a mission critical piece of equipment, or the deployment of multiple additional units to meet a departmental surge capability reflect his unwavering dedication to the ATC EMS team. He readily displays a genuine good humor and willingness to help, regardless of the situation, and absolutely demonstrates a dedication to excellence in customer service. Mr. James Lawrence's actions reflect the highest credit on himself, the Austin Travis County EMS Department Supply Section, and the Austin Travis County EMS Department. In the spirit of its namesake, this award is presented in recognition of your devotion, hard work, knowledge, compassion, and willingness to complete any task. Your actions over the years exemplify what the strength of the team is truly the individual. And that award goes to Mr. James Lawrence. And unfortunately, he is not here with us this evening, but we will ensure that he receives this award. Our next award is the Michael Becker Humanitarian Award. It is given to recognize the selfless acts of employees who volunteer to make our community a better place to live. The following is a nomination for this award. 
During the 2014 year, Kelsey Patrick, acting on a suggestion, created a public service announcement video that I feel placed the department in a unique, unprecedented situation. Kelsey created, directed, and videoed the whole project on his own time and resources. The video was shown publicly at a city council meeting in honor of EMS Week, which I feel did a great justice to everyone in this department. Kelsey Patrick deserves recognition for his efforts and dedication. I feel no one else in the, this department has ever performed such an action. Named after ATC EMS paramedic Michael A. Becker, in order to honor the memory of a truly brave and compassionate man, in the spirit of promoting safety, compassion, and the mission of Austin Travis County EMS, we humbly thank you for your efforts and talent in creating and producing a public safety message for the city of Austin, which truly comes from the heart. Kelsey Patrick. If you've seen that video, you know it's truly amazing, and if you've heard him perform it live, it's even better. Um, unfortunately, Kelsey is also not here this evening, but we will ensure that he receives his award. Our next award, the Meritorious Service Award, is given for an event or action of particularly meritorious service to the department, which reflects positively upon the individual and the department. Tonight, we have two Meritorious Service Awards. The following is a nomination for the first award. On April 4, 2014, as they arrived at their station on Medic 6, Randy Vickery and Heath Holt intervened in what appeared to be a male assaulting a female beside their station. The male turned on Holt, punching and attacking him, attacking him, and the ensuing fight put both providers' lives in jeopardy. Injuries to the crew were minor, but their intervention into a situation that did not involve the patient likely prevented serious injury to the victim. Presented for your willingness to intervene in an active altercation, even in the face of your own potential injury, your actions directly prevented additional harm to a citizen and demonstrated your dedication to the profession and department. This award is for Heath Holt and Randy Vickery. <laughs> Those gentlemen also are not with us this evening. All right, y'all got to bear with me. I got a lot of text to read for this next one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> The following is a nomination for the second Meritorious Service Award. We were just dispatched to a two-car MVA at the intersection of 290 and 130 that turned into a vehicle rescue. Upon our arrival, Medic 23 took medical command and we were advised that there were two patients. <coughs> Brian Haddis was assigned to the second patient who was a restrained driver of a car who was still seated in his car with his seatbelt on. The car was resting up on the guardrail, guardrail and when Brian made contact with the patient, he was self-extricating. He took his seatbelt off and moved over to the passenger seat door to get out. Brian started his assessment and could tell immediately the patient had at a minimum a, con a, concu a concussion. <laughs> he had repetitive questions along with a large swollen hematoma and had no idea that he was in an accident. He was a TCSO officer in full gear and duty belt going into work. All of the responding agencies on scene were concentrating on the extrication and care of the unconscious patient at this time or if they had just walked up the ambulatory patient just looked like an on-duty TCSO officer. Brian advised him that he was in an accident and that he was going to need to put a seat collar on him. It was then when the patient got defensive and reached for his duty weapon. Brian reacted quickly and grabbed the officer's wrist and slowly and calmly talked him down to where he let go of his gun. It was still on his duty belt when Brian distracted the patient and got the attention of another officer who was advised of what just happened. The entire time he had repetitive questions and had some verbal expletives and was not in his right mind. Brian and the other officer were able to get the patient to give up his duty belt. There were at least a two to three minute period where the officer was armed and acting aggressive. Brian had us kept his cool and acted, in my opinion, above his scope. He took great personal risk to make sure that the patient remained safe and every responding personnel on the, on the scene remained safe. I was not even aware of the incident until I walked up to assist Brian in getting him into our ambulance and to get a good assessment and vitals on him. He was still at this point very aggressive and was repetitive. <coughs> we ended up transporting to Brockenridge ER where he was moved to bed 13 where he could get some definitive care. This situation could have a very bad and different outcome if it were not for the quick actions of Brian. He could have elected to run off until officers on scene but with the patient in his current state of mind could have easily es escalated. The scene was filled with AFD 
MFD, APD, and TCSO and civilian witnesses. His actions kept them safe while on scene. The ironic part of this is that I can almost guarantee that almost everyone on scene never knew that there was a potential risk. I think this is why Brian acted like he did. I thought someone should know. Presented for your rapid recognition and action in carefully disarming a patient who has sustained a head injury by placing yourself in harm's way, you prevented injury to another member of the public safety community while preserving the dignity of the individual officer involved. This award is for Brian Haddis. Our next award is for the Distinguished Service Award. It's given to employees who consistently, over time, demonstrate and deliver exceptional service to the community or department that in turn reflects positively on the employee and the department. The following is the nomination we received. I am nominating Lynn Cohee for the ATC EMS Distinguished Service Award. Lynn's vision for and work on the department's data warehouse has been consistently outstanding. He has sustained this vision and maintained effort consistently over several years' time. Because of him, ATC EMS is a leader in this area, not only among city departments, but among EMS provider organizations across the country. We are recognized within the city as a model for its open data initiatives and at the national level for performance measure publication. None of this would be possible without the work that Mr. Cohey has done to ensure that we have high quality data available to support these efforts and data management tools that make these endeavors possible. As a department, we are better positioned to pursue future performance measurement and improvement initiatives because of the often unrecognized work of Mr. Cohey. Mr. Cohey is also being recognized personally for his abilities in this area at the city level, with other departments coming to him for guidance and advice. And throughout his work, Mr. Cohey is consistently a pleasure to work with, both, perso both personally and professionally. We are fortunate to have him on the bar team. This award is presented for your vision and work on developing a data warehouse. Your efforts over the years have produced a system that has been recognized at both a local and national level. The massive effort you expended has created not just a process, but a legacy. Lynn Cohey. I'd like to bring forward to the stage the Office of the Milk Director, uh, our Medical Director, Jose Cabanas, and uh, the Chief of Staff with the uh, Medical Office is uh, Jeff Hayes. So there will be no subtitles for Dr. Cabanas, so please bear with us. Oh, God. You guys, you guys are cracking me up. All right. The fun part starts. The Excellence Award, the Clinical Excellence Award, is given by joint agreement between the Office of the Medical Director and the development in the department for ongoing exceptional delivery of or contribute contributions to the advancement of the practice of medicine within the Austin Travis County EMS department. Our most important attribute is our focus on patient care. Everything that we do needs to focus on the care that we deliver to our patients. They are first in everything we do and we place our needs second to theirs. There are so many who deserve this recognition for their excellence, but there were four individuals who provided exceptional examples of true clinical excellence, and we are proud to recognize the following individuals for their clinical excellence. Captain Klein's clinical excellence has been demonstrated in both his clinical care and patient advocacy throughout 2014. He worked as a community health paramedic, field training officer, and medic two assigned to field operations. His focus on service and compassion was evident in conversations with the DMOs and observations on scene. His willingness to find solutions that best suit the patient's needs and should be example to all. A commander recently noted, Paul, in my opinion, is a very hard worker and always keeps his station spotless. He is a great clinician and excellent educator. I have seen him teach his students and he has a wealth of knowledge to share. Paul has also received accolades from ACC for his ability to mentor students and his ability to provide a good clinical experience. Paul Klein. <clears throat> Mr. Tone has demonstrated his commitment to clinical excellence through the relationships he builds with other responders 
is noted through conversations and observation. His intelligence and desire to help every public servant provide the best possible care to our community is outstanding. This, this is evident by his interactions with the DMOs and is consistently high performance in the following clinical performance indicators. Trauma and stroke scene times, aspirin administration and acute coronary syndrome, blood glucose level and altered mental status, seizure and stroke. Kyle Tone. in which Mr. Wadham assesses and cares for his patients truly demonstrates clinical excellence. Our strategic plan states that attention to detail, reliability, and consistent quality is our mainstay. Mr. Wadham is the embodiment of this statement. Mr. Wadham's care is thoughtful, careful, and compassionate as evident by this note from a patient. The providers had been very friendly and caring. He had checked him out thoroughly and even helped clean up the mess he had made in his kitchen. In addition, he is well known for his meticulous clinical documentation. Mr. Wadham is invested in our system and regularly contacts the DMOs to speak about a case or suggest a change to clinical standards that he believes may assist other patients. Gary Wadham. <clears throat> Ms. Willis's clinical excellence is manifest in the consistently high quality care she provides to our community. While reviewing her PCR documentation, two things stand out. The detail and the extra effort she takes to provide context. In addition, her thoughtful interaction with the DMO shows a desire to improve the care of our patients received. This and her consistent high performance in the clinical performance indicators are worthy of recognition. Audrey Willis. Good evening. As you all know, the Medical Director's Award is awarded by the Medical Director uh, to a practitioner that is passionately committed to and exemplifies the art of science and of a clinically sophisticated patient-focused field practice of medicine. Craig Fairbrother, where are you at, man? <laughs> Craig joined the Community Health Paramedic Program for Fiscal Yield 2014-2015. In November of 2014, personnel Fairbrother took it upon himself to make contact with the administration of the Austin Transition Center. His desire was to develop a program that would help the center better provide for the medical needs of the residents. Through his diligence, steadfastness, and dedication of duty, personnel Fairbrother led the development of a streamlining of the Austin Transition Center intake process, helped in the development of medication dispersal system on site, and coordinated with Community Care Clinic's mobile med team for our on-site clinic once a week. Not only has personal Fairbrother led in the development of these programs, but through his unique abilities gained the trust of both the facility staff and the residents. Personal Fairbrother has helped countless residents of the Austin Transition Center better understand their medical conditions the management of their chronic disease processes, and how to access preventive health care in the community. Through his undaunted dedication to this project, the system has seen a significant reduction in call volume from the Austin Transgender Center. Some estimates are as high as 30% in reduction in calls per day to this location, thus saving an unfortunate amount of money both to the EMS system and the hospital networks and reducing employee fatigue. Craig Fairbrother, come up here, man. <laughs> Thanks, 
placed him right. That's it, man. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Right? Absolutely. I actually have permission to alter from the script a little bit from Melissa tonight. But before I start, it's truly an honor to have recognized these individuals for their clinical accomplishments. So let's give them one another hand. There's one more recognition that I'd like to make tonight. And there's very few of us in this room, and I mean very few, that have the institutional memory to be able to do this. So think about it. November 23rd, 1986, 845 in the morning, a Sunday, my very first day at Austin EMS. During our morning unit check, my training partner grabs a radio and mic and says, aid 14 radio test. The response is one of the coolest voices I've ever heard that wasn't on FM radio. <laughs> you know, it's the Don Henley type where you feel the emotion in the voice as he sings. Loud and clear, aid 14, KZT 415, WSX 469, Austin, EMS, 8.45 a.m. I look at my training partner and I go, who is Ken Saunders? And yes, Ken's that old. It showed 10 years up here, but he's been back several times and he actually did <laughs> train me. I said, who's the radio DJ? And he goes, that's Shamard. You'll learn to love that voice and the calmness it brings you when you're on a call. And Kim was right. I can't tell you how many times I relaxed going to a call knowing he was on the other end of that radio. I have never, I was never fortunate enough to be able to work with James on an ambulance as a partner, but I was able to stand in the classroom with him as a co-instructor and feel that the same comfort knowing that we were impacting the next generation of EMS people for years to come. It's hard to believe, James, it's been 30 years since we started this journey. You've served our city and county in multiple roles that have affected the positive and sometimes, sometimes controversial challenge along the way. But most importantly, the system ended up being better for it. <clears throat> I remember your comment in a meeting when I was working for another EMS agency when the toll road system was being established and the heat was increasing on who was going to take whose calls. You calmly sat back and you waited for the noise to settle and you said, and I quote, it's just a highway. It doesn't matter who responds as long as somebody does it, it needs to be the closest ambulance because the patient doesn't care what color the trucks are. They just want to be taken care of in the best way possible. I think that pretty much sums up your career, James. Thank you from all of us for your dedication to the profession and to this system. I wish you well in your retirement from this side of the fence and know that somewhere, sometime, you will impact this profession from, of reti from retirement from the other side of the fence. Kathy, thank you for loaning him to us for all these years. We are grateful for your service through him as well. Godspeed, James Shamarge. We are ever indebted to you for our service. <laughs> now you can come up here and try to talk. <laughs> well, he's going to make it tough for me to say anything, and I don't have anything prepared. What they have listed here for me, I'll start with, and that's I'd like to uh, especially thank the award committee for putting this together. Randy Chabra, Dave Curvin, Tammy Mosaic, George Pulios, Sheila Schwal, Clemente Lee, and especially Melissa Warren. She makes all of this possible, writes the scripts for us, uh, and, and that team really made this possible. So thank you very much. I'd like to give them a round of applause.
And I guess in closing, I'd like to say two things. We had a lot of very special people come up here and, and uh, receive some awards and recognition for some great things, but we can't lose sight of what everyone in our EMS system does every single day, no matter what your position is in this department. It takes every one of us either on the front line or behind the scenes to make it, make it possible to get the outcomes that we do and be the world-class EMS system that we are and continue to be. And with that, really that concludes this ceremony and it has been a pleasure and an honor serving with each of you. Uh, and I won't be a stranger, you'll see me out there, but this will be uh, obviously my last award uh, or my last award ceremony as your assistant chief and the chief of staff. So thank you very much. I missed one part. I'd also like to thank the association for working with us and making this ceremony possible. And uh, uh, the room right next door, I believe, is where the uh, reception is. And then the dinner uh, follows that. And again, thank you very much.